Yeah. Uh, good evening, and uh, we'll be seeing now the uh, topic which is very renowned, uh, very uh, you know important topic in the induction motor concepts, and uh, this topic is uh, all about uh, knowing the behavior of an induction motor, and uh, with respect to the torque and speed of an induction motor, how do you exactly understand the behavior of an induction motor? To be specific. I would be taking a topic on speed torque characteristics. What is it? Speed torque characteristics. So, basically, for any motor or any mechanical engine, whatever you consider, all that uh, motors or engines have got a specific uh, uh, behavior with the, when it comes to uh, torque and speed. Uh, let us say if you take a normal vehicle, you know, a, a, a car, uh, if you are going at uh, a first gear or a second gear, you would find the torque, initial torque that requires to move the entire weight of the uh, vehicle is very high. I mean, it should be very high. And, and, and the speed will be first gear, second gear, you would find very less speed. You know, uh, this is how initially when you are in first gear and second gear, you would have to have a very less speed. I mean, you will have a less speed and you would have to generate more torque so that you can start or initiate the movement. This is how in the beginning it is, you know, torque and speed. Torque will be very high and the speed will be very low. But when it comes to fifth gear, when you are going at a high speed, well, let us say 120 kilometers per hour, then definitely the torque that is exerted by the engine, you know, uh, onto the axle and all will be less, you know. Uh, uh, this is how you would find uh, the relation between uh, the speed and torque. In the initial uh, time of a uh, engine or a motor, whatever that you see, uh, will have more torque production and the speed will be minimum and as it is starting it is minimum. But when you see at a higher speed you would find the torque is very less and the speed is very high. So, with this what you can conclude? You can say that the speed and torque are neither proportional nor inversely proportional. I mean to say in sometimes they are proportional uh, at sometimes they are inversely proportional. You cannot fix one relation. You cannot say that it is always proportional. You cannot say that it is always inversely proportional. Hope you are getting me. You know, whenever you take any motor, the motor has got torque and speed characteristics and these torque and speed characteristics would change with respect to the operating condition. Definitely, we would, they would have a different relation. In fact, a reverse or inverse relation when it comes to different operating conditions. Now, we will be seeing about an induction motor. So, uh, a three phase induction motor, what we are going to see today is a, is a uh, uh, induction motor, a speed, torque, characteristics. Okay. So, yeah. So, this is uh, the uh, very important lecture, I mean very important topic when it comes to any, you know, uh, uh, motor, I mean speed and torque, how they would vary. So, before going into the actual uh, behavior or before going into the um, I mean waveform I mean, or graph what we call, first we need to understand about the torque equation. What is the basic expression of torque? You know, basically the torque is taken, torque is proportional to phi into IA. This is uh, uh, a DC motor uh, uh, you know, equation that we uh, get from a DC motor. So, what is this phi? Phi is the fl flux which is established in the field and IA is the armature current. This is how you have an equation for uh, 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 torque in a DC shunt motor or a series motor. But when it comes to AC motor, you will have an equation similar to it but you will have a little deviated you know terms there you know in which you will find the flux you know e phi this flux is a flux which is set up in the field maybe the stator winding field flux and uh, this is your <coughs> i2 i2 stands for the current that is flowing into the rotor winding and coming to the 
cos phi cos phi is considered to be the power factor of the rotor winding this is how you will have different terms here in this uh, torque equation when you make some derivation for this you know for phi and i2 and cos phi when you get a you know proper derivation of this equation you would finally get an equation of uh, torque uh, uh, like this you know torque is proportional to k into uh, s into e to square multiplied r2 divided by r2 square plus s x2 whole square. <laughs> now this is how you will have a final generalized equation of torque. You know in this one whatever the constant you are finding it is basically uh, equal to 3 uh, uh, it is uh, equal to 3 by 2 pi n s you know this is a constant that we are uh, least bothered about it maybe when you are taking uh, you know uh, some uh, problems numericals this may be required and coming to the other parameters uh, let me explain or I don't give a detail of all these parameters uh, no this is the slip that you have and uh, this is your uh, EMF induced in the secondary winding of a induction motor and coming to this R2, R2 is the resistance offered by the rotor winding and coming to this denominator you have again the rotor you know in fact you have impedance of the rotor which is the combination of the resistance of the rotor as well as the reactance of the rotor. Now <coughs> here there is one more term I mean one more time S is mentioned you know S x2 yes when you are taking the reactance in the rotor winding you would have an effect of uh, slip not only the rotor winding reactance when you consider even when you consider EMF induced in the rotor you would have an effect of the split slip on the EMF induced in the rotor not only the EMF even uh, if you take the rotor current even frequency all that would have the effect of slip in its equation you know in a separate lecture I would be taking that you know in detail about the equations now let me now go ahead towards the speed and torque characteristics you know speed and torque or speed versus torque characteristics right fine now let me <coughs> take uh, the graph let me take the graph <clears throat> so I would take I would take uh, torque on y-axis okay and uh, I would consider yeah here I need to spend some time on x-axis I would consider two parameters of the induction motor what are the two parameters you know basically we need to take the speed yes I'll take the speed yeah I'll take the speed let's say the speed is here that is NR what is meant by NR there are two speeds right NS and NR NS is called synchronous speed that is the speed of the uh, you know ro a state of flux rotating magnetic field speed and ENR is the speed of the rotor which is generally called as the speed of the motor okay now we'll see about <coughs> uh, the speed is taken on x axis and the speed is now ranging from ranging from 0 NR is equals to 0 rpm you know it is a 0 rpm and it is reaching to the maximum what is the maximum speed that that NR can achieve or attain the maximum speed of uh, uh, the motor that it can attain is uh, NS NS you know at NS even if, if it attains also at NS you will find the motor stops because the rotor when it catches the speed of the state of flux in an induction motor there will not be any flux cut so when there is no flux cut here you will find the EMF induced in the rotor 0 when you have EMF induced in the rotor 0 then the torque will be 0 this is how uh, you will not have an exist I mean you will not have this condition existing in the actual operating 
of a induction motor but still you will consider to understand the behavior of torque with respect to this speed range okay now the speed is taken from 0 rpm to its maximum rpm okay now along with this along with this i will take another parameter i'll take another parameter which is which is slip what is it slip so now and the slip you know what is the value of slip you know what is the value of slip at the speed nr is equals to 0 you know basically uh, the equation that gives i mean that is there for us for the slip it usually slip is the uh, uh, defined as the uh, uh, speed difference you know it's called like uh, because the rotor always slips behind the stator state of speed then there is a speed difference you know differential speed will generate from the you know induction motor concepts and out of which you got a term called slip and that is defined as ns minus nr divided by ns what is that ns minus nr divided by ns where ns is the synchronous speed at which the stator flux is rotating and nr is the speed of the rotor i mean to say the motor so when you have a speed difference then there will be a slip generated from that speed difference so we can call the slip as differential speed or the speed difference between the stator and the rotor of an induction motor so according to that equation what could be the value of the you know uh, slip when nr is 0 when nr is 0 you can substitute there when nr is equals to 0 here then ns minus 0 divided by ns you know this will become this will be 0 so we'll have ns by ns so ns by ns will be cancelled and finally you will get the slip as one so here if you see it clearly the slip is now ranging from one the maximum i mean the slip starting value itself is one okay the slip starting value itself is one and what about the slip at this point what about the slip at this point okay so uh, when the speed of a induction motor i mean the rotor speed is equal to the synchronous speed what is the slip can you just get uh, from this equation like ns minus nr i mean nr is equals to know what ns so what will happen to the slip here so this will be ns right ns by ns minus ns will be zero so the slip will be slip will be zero okay so we are going into a very interesting discussion here you know we are going into a very uh, interesting part of the topic you know you are having a speed parameter taken first parameter taken on the x-axis ranging from 0 rpm to its rated or i mean to say the uh, not rated i mean the maximum speed that it can attain ns okay and the second parameter what we are finding finding there is the slip the slip slip is now can be understood if the value of speed is zero then the slip will be one and if the value of speed is uh, ns then the slip is zero so can you get my point here the speed is now increasing on its x-axis i mean when you take the range of speeds it is increasing in the value 0 rpm to the maximum rpm and when you when you get to this slip value slip is now decreasing it is decreasing from 1 i mean its maximum value to 0 if you see uh, the uh, other lectures of mine you will find the slip of slip of a i mean induction motor slip range is always 0 to 1 the minimum value that a slip can have is 0 and the maximum value that this slip can have is 1 you know this is how the range you know the slip is starting from its maximum 1 to the 0 are you understanding speed is increasing slip is decreasing what is happening as the speed is increasing obviously the slip will decrease that is what I have taken on my x-axis now we'll see from this equation I would make some analysis so that I can plot my graph here you know I'll just remove this for time being and then and then 
I will divide I will divide this operation into two you know uh, I mean to say uh, uh, like I will divide this into two different <coughs> discussions i mean to say uh, let's let's say uh, i will analyze this uh, torque equation uh, based on the slip value let's say i will take first high slip region what is that high slip region so what am i doing here i am splitting the value i mean the slip range is split into two let's say this is one right so maybe this maybe this can be your point uh, uh, 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, maybe 0 0.7, maybe 0 0.5 and then 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 and then 0. This, this is how it can change, you know. So, I'll take high slip region. What is it? High slip region. Maybe it is from this point, I mean this region to this region. This may be a high slip region. region okay and uh, uh, after that whatever that you get you know from 0.7 of slip to 0 this is my low low slip region this is how it is high slip region and low slip region now let me analyze what happens if I take high slip region you know High slip region is nothing but the slip values are higher, you know, you'll have higher slip values, maybe in the order of 1 to 0.7. Let's try to understand what will happen. When I take high slip region, see here, you should be very careful here, you know, see in the denominator and numerator, you find slips, slip parameter, I mean slip on both sides, I mean on denominator as well as on denominator as well as on numerator so if i take high slip region in the denominator in this in this you know in the denominator yes x2 square will be very high compared to r2 what is happening if i take high range of slips during high values of slips maybe 0 0.9 0 0.95 0 0.98 0 0.8 0 0.7 if you consider this range as high range of slip then during that region in the denominator whatever the value that you have you know yes x2 square will be very high compared to r2 compared to r2 so then what you can do you can ignore this you know you can neglect it by neglecting this what will happen you know take this entire equation now so take the entire equation torque is proportional to k yes e2 square and then r2 divided by what is ignored here r2 right when you ignore r2 what is left yes into x2 whole square whole square i'll just you know take it inside s square and s square and x2 square you know then what will happen you see here this once i mean square times of slip is there right so that square is being getting cancelled with this and this is anyways a constant e2 is anyways a constant r2 is anyways a constant and finally what you find here this is also a constant okay then what will happen the final expression of torque now the torque is proportional to what is left all are constant this is constant this is constant this is constant this is also constant but this is not constant slip always changes with respect to the load my dear so what you'll find here it is proportional to 1 by s o so what is that during high slip region torque is proportional to 1 by s i mean torque is inversely proportional to the slip now you may be a little confused here we are discussing about speed torque but my discussion is going towards the slip you have to understand one point here if you want to understand the behavior of torque and speed of an induction motor you must have to take the variation of torque with respect to slip then only you can 
then only you can understand how the speed and torque is varying. In other way, I can say to understand the relation or behavior of speed and torque of an induction motor, I am making use of slip. I am depending on slip. Okay, so torque is proportional to 1 by s. Okay, so here if I mean these two are inversely proportional. What does it mean? If slip is increasing, the torque will, <coughs> excuse me, if slip is increasing in nature, then the torque will be decreasing. But what is happening here? The slip is now decreasing. It is going from 1 to 0.7. Then what will happen? The slip is decreasing. So, the torque, what do you find here? The torque, what do you find here? Will increase. You know, there will be a starting torque. This is called starting torque will be there always and as the slip is decreasing according to this equation during high slip region slip is inversely proportional to torque so i can say that torque is now going to increase until until this point you know until this point okay this is how i can get right my dear fine what about the remaining remaining region you know i i classified that region as what is this <coughs> low slip region so when i take uh, low <coughs> excuse me low slip region so where the slip values are what slip values are low you know lower slip values then what will happen then what will happen okay then what will happen is you will find that s x2 okay square in the denominator again like same like this right in the denominator of torque equation you have this this term right this term if i consider for low region of slip i will say i can say that s x2 square will be very much less compared to R2. You cannot say that R2 will be, you know, SX2 will be completely zero. You cannot say that. But still, uh, to, if you compare, you know, if you make a comparison between R2 and SX2, SX2 will be very less. So, I can ignore it or neglect it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Torque is uh, proportional to now. Take the same entire equation. Yes, e to square r two divided by yes. Uh, yeah. So what I have done here in this denominator, I have to neglect this term, right? So I'll get only r two square. Is that okay? R two square. Then what will happen here? What will happen, my dear? This is constant and this square is cancelled with this. So, R2 is also a constant. E2 is anyways a constant. And now the torque is, torque is directly proportional to, torque is directly proportional to the slip, you know. Are you observing it now? Torque is directly proportional to the slip. So, in the low slip region, when you see the torque behavior, torque is now directly proportional to the slip, which means if the torque is, I mean, if the slip is increasing, the torque will increase. If the slip is decreasing, the torque will decrease. Now, let's come and see what is happening in this region. In the low slip region, the value of slip, I mean, the range of slip, the values, I mean, the slip is getting reduced. It is reducing from 0.7 to uh, you know zero then what will happen as the slip is reducing as the slip is reducing you will find your torque also you'll find your torque also reduced and does it get to zero does it get to zero yes why not because slip is getting to zero so torque will also get to zero not only that when you have the speed is equals to nr is equals to ns then the slip will be zero when the slip is zero in this equation you will get torque is zero 
okay or you can say when the when the rotor speed is equals to stator uh, stator flux speed there will not be any flux cut when there is no flux cut there will not be any emf induced in the rotor so when there is no emf in the rotor e2 will be considered as zero i mean e2 is zero and thereby the torque will be zero no torque i mean torque will be zero when the torque is zero what does it mean no force produced what does it mean then the motor comes to stand still it doesn't move it doesn't have any torque production it cannot take any load anymore it stops this is how you can understand the entire speed torque characteristics it's very simple it's very simple as I told in the beginning I have taken only the torque equation and divided this topic into two different you know uh, uh, regions I mean I have taken into two different regions I mean based on this high slip region how the torque is uh, responding based on the low slip region how the torque is uh, responding during high slip region maybe during this time you will find the torque is inversely proportional to the slip and during low slip region you are getting an analysis from this you are able to analyze by yourself that torque is proportional to the slip so here in this region you are getting torque is proportional so here it is what is it torque is torque is inversely proportional to the slip and here torque is directly proportional to the slip that's why as the slip values are going down the torque will rise and here as the slip values are going down the torque will go down because it is proportional <coughs> now i have a question for you what about the speed because we are not going to study we are not studying about the speed and torque characteristics i mean the, the the torque and slip characteristics we are studying about the torque and speed so how about the speed variation yes you can get it from there see as the torque is inversely proportional to the slip come here to the during this side i mean to the to the x axis what is happening to your slip i mean uh, the speed the speed is increasing right the speed is increasing the speed is increasing and torque is increasing where in the low i mean in the high slip region during this time okay during this region during this region you will find the torque is yeah torque is increasing yes torque is increasing and speed is also increasing from zero right so torque is proportional to the speed and what about during the low slip region you find here the speed is increasing right it is still increasing but torque is getting down decreasing so here you will find the speed is increasing torque is decreasing so inversely proportional this is how you can get the relation between the speed and the torque okay and if you are really interested to know about next topic you can find that uh, uh, in the next videos of mine if time permits i will uh, record it also how the torque and resistance are going to be uh, explained you know how the torque and resistance are how the resistance will be responding for the rotor resistance sorry how the torque is going to be uh, how the torque is going to be responding for the rotor resistance okay if you change the rotor resistance how does the torque will change that also you have to take uh, with the effect of low slip region as well as high slip region i mean high slip region and low slip region in these two regions only you have to analyze the uh, relation between the torque and the rotor resistance i hope you got the points here so <laughs> these are the equations analysis and the graph all the best